40 minutes or so, and I'm going to walk you through some of the models online that you can use to study the material you've been losing. Remember, your quizzes are on the real, the real plastic. Remember, your quizzes are always name it, claim it on the plastic. But there's places you can go online that you can study and quiz yourself. So I'm going to walk you through those as a class. We all know some of the words and some of the hints and whatnot. So remember, the quizzes are always the real deal, the real fake deal, right? So I'm going to, this is my webpage. Not that again, I'm trying to sell my webpage, but I'm going to use the links I provided. I like those pages myself. Today, can I do a little more? I'm trying to make it too overly dark. Maybe it's that center one. Too dark? Okay, so I'm just going to lab models on the web. The first one, the one I love the best. And we're going to go to material. So we're going to start naming some external brain structures. So let's start with. Someone tell me what a sulk guy or sulcus is on this picture. Uh, a groove, sulk, you know, depression. So any any groove anywhere is a sulcus. So what are jiri? A bump. So hill and valley and doctor is jiris sulcus. But any bump would be a jiris. Any dip would be a sulcus. Anywhere at all. Then what are the fissures? The big rips, the tears, right? Okay. So then there's some of them you actually have to name. And so what I'm going to do is try to find some pictures of some of these. So we're going to go and go back here. Please got one from the side. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go back here. All right, so here's happens to be colored. Great. Let's do some. There's a big groove down the very center that separates in the right and left. What would that be? Longitudinal. Longitudinal fissure. You want to say sagittal on a bone, but you don't want to say sagittal on the brain. Longitudinal fissure. Then you're going to name this one number 10. What's number 10? Central, central. central sulcus. Because it's kind of in the middle. I'm not the drunk Roman who named it. But number 10 is central sulcus. And that's important because that separates the red from the blue. Which one's the red one in this case? Frontal. Frontal lobe. And the blue one is? Okay, don't memorize the colors. The reason you got to find that one is because you're supposed to be able to name these two bumps specifically. This bump here is which one? Pre-central gyrus. In English, before the bump, bump, right? So pre-central is before the center, gyrus means bump. So it's in front of the bump, in front of the groove, I should say. The blue one right here would be what? Post-central gyrus. So behind the central bump. So those ones you have to be able to spot on a model if I had it like that. So the pre-central is motor because it's frontal. The blue one is sensory because it's parietal. And that's remember that schizophrenic picture? That was that. We're looking at those two. So then we have this guy right here. What is that cut? It's the lateral sulcus on the sides, right? The side grooves. Then you're going to name, you can't, you can't see it, but there's one between the blue and the green. Some kind of something there. Parieto occipital. Parieto occipital. It's one I hardly ever quiz on, but it's one you're supposed to know. Parieto occipital. Then we have this big, huge cut across here. Transverse. Transverse cerebral fissure. So this is your lateral sulcus, but this one's the transverse cerebral fissure below the, between the cerebrum and the cerebellum. Right. So be careful of those lateral versus transverse are not the same. So let's do D. What, what's the yellow thing? Temporal lobe. Very good. Let's see what else we're going to do. All right. So then we're going to start breaking into this thing, going a little deeper. So again, there's that one and two. That's the pre-central in one, post-central in two. Okay. Now what we're going to do now is go back and try to find this picture here. All right, so we're going to start going. I'm going to skip a little bit. Let's go down to the lower part of the brain. We're going to do like an lecture. We're going to start bottom up. So your spinal cord's down there. This bump right here. Medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata, because it's the first bump. D is what? Pons. 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 Okay. Then we have this area kind of where C is, which is neither here nor there. It's kind of here. Midbrain? That's going to be the midbrain, which they put in the brain stem, which is kind of wrong. But that's that mesencephalon. So now we're going to start naming some things. In the mesencephalon, 
You're going to have big wiring tracks, which are right where the 16 number in the C is, these big lines right there. Those what are those? Pyramids. Those are the peduncles. Very good. These bumps here, there should be four of them. So what's L going to be? Quadro, 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 oh, Capora Quadrigemina. Yes, Capora Quadrigemina. And I'll show you a zoom in on that in a minute. So you go up medulla, pons, peduncles, Capora Quadrigemina. And that ends you right in the middle there, which is your diencephalon area. Before we go there, let's go back to B. What's this big B thing? Cerebellum. Cerebellum. Very good. So... Let's zoom in some more. Uh, where am I? Okay, I'll have it. So let's do number 10. What is 10? Where is 10? Here's 10. Fornix, very good. Number 8 is something different, which is? Corpus callosum. And those are white matter, right? What does the fornix do? It's some wiring between the two, frankly. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of smell in there, too. Okay, then if you look between 8 and 10, you'll see right here, there's a little triangular ventricle? thing. There would be a ventricle if it was hollow, but there's actually a piece of quote, fabric in the way. What do you call that wall between them? Septum pellucidum. So now here's where you have to be careful. If you just see something there physically, that's a septum pellucidum. If you can look and you keep looking and there's a space in there, that's the ventricle. And on most of the models, one side has the septum, the other side has the ventricle in the same spot. Make sense? So I'll show you. Let me get a, I'll turn the lights here. I'm going to use your, of course not. I need, I need a brain that would show. Where's that underneath? Aha! Uh -huh. Here. All right, so here's the one that's going to show you vaguely what I mean. Because that quiz question has hurt more people because they get they have the right place, but they're putting the wrong word. Let me show you. All right, so I'm going to open my brain. I'm going to look. If you look in this picture, it's just like this one. There's a little triangle piece of tissue between 8 and 10. You can't look inside the, the brain. That's a septum pellucidum. It's a wall. If you look at the one in my left hand, notice how there's a space back in there, right? You can see the ventricle behind the brain. That's because the septum's missing. This one has the wall. This one does not. Same spot. Make sense? So if you can just if you can't see in, that's the septum. If you can see in, that's the ventricle. The septum's between the two. So hence, when they cut it, the septum will be separating the two ventricles apart. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. right, so be careful. Same spot, different thing. There's a wall or not, that's the difference. So that model up there on the screen is showing a septum pellucidum, but not the ventricle which is behind it. Make sense? Yep. Yes. Cool. You all nod now that I wait to your exams. All right. all right, so we got it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at those ventricles, those spaces. I'm going to shift models here briefly. So we found the fornix. We found that. Let's go to the not there model. Remember, this doesn't exist, right? OK, so let's look at number one. What are ones? Lateral ventricles. Those are the ventricles in the side of your brains. OK, so then tell me what? This number three is. Choroid it's a choroid plexus. Where would that be? Where's your choroid plexus located? Epithalamus. So if you if you go back to your other model, that little dot there was that dot in the center of the thalamus. Mm -hmm. And so there's the epithalamus in red. That's the third ventricle. Number three is the fluid, the space around the thalamus. So again, you can't see it when you look at the model, but that's the spaces around the thalamus. So you have the two laterals, and this is the third. Make sense? But what is the white dot? Again? The dot was, OK, what's the dot? <laughs> Hold on. Put that in your brain. Visualize that picture, right? Go, go. Okay. That dot is? That dot right there. So let me show you a different picture. 
That dot is that dot there. That's the thalamus. The thalamus is a dumbbell shape. So in the center of the brain, it's a little circle. And then it gets to be a big balloon on each side. And there's a ring around it. And that's what you see in the third ventricle is the ring around that circle. So would that be a commissure? Yes, essentially. Or interphalamic adhesion. Or <laughs> don't overinterpret it too far. So in English, my lateral ventricles are the ones, the ones coming at you. They're going to drain into number three, which is in my diencephalon. How does the fluid get from one to three? Look at number six. <laughs> what is number six, you think? Right here, too? What was it? I heard it. Interventricular foramina or interventricular foramen. Think of the word inter between ventricular ventricle foramen hole. So in English, those are the holes that allow the laterals and thirds to communicate with the fluid. So you have the lateral ventricles, ones. Number six is the interventricular foramen. It's the hole that enables it to drain into number three, third ventricle. Then this long number five is a tube or a drain. That's number five. Cerebral aqueduct to number four, which is the fourth ventricle, which is down, down here. Which is by the brain stem behind the cere by the cerebellum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this away and go back to the other one and do the exactly the same math. I can hear your joke. Uh, from the Daphne site. Palomar. So let's, let's pretend. Ventricle's somewhere in there. It's going to come out a hole you can't see. Third ventricle is all this area here. Can someone tell me number 16? That's the cerebral aqueduct. It's in the midbrain. Down to number 25, this V here. Fourth ventricle, and then it's going to go do the split. So the laterals you don't see, third Aqueduct four. That's the CSF flow on this model. The other one was that. Hmm? Point to the third again. Sorry. Third is basically right here. Makes a ring right there. Okay. Then aqueduct four. Make sense? Okay. I didn't write this. All right. So let's go back. We're going to zoom in now on our diencephalon. We're going to zoom in in there. So fourteen is the thalamus. 28 is above that, so 28 must be the what? epithalamus, or I think your Vlad thinks it's choroid plexus. Cool. So what's 26, Smarties? It sure is, because it's below thalamus. Okay, 22 is below that. Pituitary gland. And that white thing, which is not labeled, is the? I heard it. Infundibulum. That's the stalk. So thalamus, epithalamus, or choroid plexus, hypothalamus, infundibulum, pituitary gland. On um, most of the brains, pituitary is missing. But if you see that, you know pituitary infundibulum. Okay? So then we're going to zip back to the back here. So let me change this a little bit for you. Just a second. <laughs> so looking up. So tell me what um, 23 is again. Two is our gland with the stalk. If that were removed, you'd be looking down into the hypothalamus. So that's just showing what it looks like with that on it. Right? So now what we're going to do is start doing some of the other structures that are around here. So let's zoom on down to the cerebellum land. So remember our cerebellum is B. If you look carefully, you see white stuff in there. How would a Roman describe that white stuff? Like a tree. Like a tree. Tree white. What, how do we say that? Arbor vita, just like the thing you plant. So the tree, the white that you see, is the tree. You're going to keep a tree motif in your mind. Because these ridges on your cerebellum look like what on the tree? 
It's like leaves and branches. And how do you say leaves and branches? Foliage. Foliage or folia. So these lines are folia because they're leaves of the tree. You're drunk enough to get this, right? No. All right. So in the Roman world, the cerebellum was a tree with leaves. That's how they thought. So the arbor vita is the white inside, the folia are the ridges on top. Now, there's a worse thing. You can't see it, but the, the cerebellum dips in and makes a V there. So there's two halves. What do you call the halves of a cerebellum? Hemispheres. Hemispheres, just like the cerebrum. But now there's some more wording. There's actually a name for the ridge that forms that seam. It starts with a V, means worm. The vermis. So the vermis we call the butt crack of the cerebellum. If you look in the butt crack of a cerebellum, you will see a ridge called the vermis that runs between the hemispheres. Right, so the ver you can't see it on this model here. So you have a vermis between the hemispheres, the folia are the ridges, the arbor vita is the light. You okay on that? So D is arbor vita, E is, no, B is... B is folia on the cerebellum. And E is... E is not no. anything on the cerebellum. Okay. I don't have a good one with arbor vita. I don't. So do okay in our cerebellum? Bless you. We're almost done. Because let's now find alien baby. Here's the alien baby. This is the diencephalon in one big piece. So to get your bearings, this and this are the thalamus. When you cut the braid, all you see is this part here. That's that circle in the center. But it actually makes like a dumbbell shape, like that. So this is the thalamus. The hypothalamus is where you are here on down. So what you're going to do is start naming the wires, the cranial nerves, as they come out. The trick is, in this piece, you're missing number one. Number one went to your nose way up there. So you're going to start with number 39 in this picture, which is which one? Optic. Optic or number two. And then the rule is you number from nose down, inside out. So two, three, there's one on the side, four. Five should be this big one on the pons. Number five is? Trigeminal. Trigeminal. That's the biggest one on the pons. That's your landmark. If you get to five, you should be there. So one, two, three, four, five. And start in the middle again. Six, seven, it's hard to see, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. That's how you number them. So you go in, out, down, and up. Eight right? has two of them, right? There's a eight's a two, so you might see two wires, but it's the only one on the end of the pawns over here. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just like that. Right. But you want to practice that, because the different alien babies have them looking slightly differently. But you're going to go kind of down and in to out. How you do it? What is it that you're pointing at? The little white things. The white things are the crayon. I may have a better picture. Maybe. Maybe not. You're not much better. This one shows them from the side. Wow. I got what I got. So while we're there, Alien Baby, you turn Alien Baby around. So the, the front's behind you. You're looking at the back of the brain. This is thalamus. So here, I want you to notice that there's one, two, three, four bumps. So what must 54 be has four bumps? Tri tri what? Quadra quadrimina. That thing in the midbrain is because there's four bumps. <laughs> That comes out. So if you're looking at the back of your brain, that's the capora quadrigemina. And you have to know the two bumps' names. The upper bump is what? On your list. Superior colliculus. Bonus smile. Where is that at? I know it's on there. It's on page five. So superior colliculus is the upper of the two. And what do you call the bottom one of that? Inferior, inferior colliculus. So the capora quadrimina has two superior colliculi and two inferior colliculi, making the four total. Then you're going to say, okay, Smarty, what's 53? That's a bump that isn't one of the four. 
What is that thing? It's a gland, mind you. Not pituitary, that's on the other side. That's the pineal gland. So the pineal gland is on top of the capora quadrigemina on the back of the brain. Right? So, what I'm going to do now is make you more angry. I remember. That's what it's like. Do you guys, I have a question. Yeah. So, on our sheet, it says that the Corpora yeah. Is in the brainstem. It's not. Okay, so that's confusing. That was just a weird spot. <laughs> it's really, it's in the midbrain, formally. Between. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick little review using this half model. So I'm just going to point randomly, and you're going to try to figure out what I'm pointing at. Let's see. Let's start with an easy one. That. White bump. Medulla oblongata, the big bump there. Hans, too easy, drill sergeant. This space there. Fourth ventricle. Very good. This tube right there. Which one? Cerebral aqueduct. Very good. Now we're going to make it a little harder. This big white line. Corpus callosum. This right here. Look carefully. Septum. Are you saying septum or ventricle? Septum. Say septum because there's no hole there. You can't see in. That's the septum pellucidum. The white line here, the arch? Fornix. Okay, so that's red and blue area right there. The epithalamus would work or choroid plexus would work. Now I'm going to be a little harder on you. This pink dot here. Very good. Pituitary gland. This pink dot there. Pineal gland. So I'm looking behind your brain. That's what I'm looking at. So therefore, these two dots here, which is only half the model. Good enough. Right. Superior inferior colliculus of the core quadrigemina. The B4. Right? Do you know that? Okay. Right. The bumps here. Folia, very good. The space full of fluid right here. Very good. Too easy, drill sergeant. That's a very good choice. Very good. That's the gist. So now we got a couple more things to fill in, which are on the last page of your lab packet, I believe. Which are the meninges and whatnot. Okay, so supposedly you had meninges last term, right? We did spinal cord. You know about the dura and all that. So we don't have to worry about that. We have to worry about these thinking sinuses. So here's... I don't have a good online version to help you, so you just have to struggle. Well, let's go through this way. I want you to look at this person's head and look up here. That's a space above their brain and below their skull with holes in it. What would you call that space? See, it's on top, the superior, the sinus, sagittal. Christine was right long ago. So superior, that's your superior sagittal sinus. That's the space on the top of your brain, between your brain and skull, where all the fluid collects to drain back. And those little holes represent where the CSF comes into the space. Those are the arachnoid villi, those little drain holes. So you're draining out of the screen. That's your superior sagittal sinus. Now, if you look here, that superior sagittal sinus comes down and sort of makes this in pocket right here. What was that thing between the cerebrum and the cerebellum called again? Transverse cerebral fissure. Okay, close enough. So now, we're going to name the space in there, not the groove, but the space. So what would you call a space in a transverse cerebral fissure? Transverse sinus. So this represents the transverse sinus. It'd go this way. So superior sagittal sinus is between the top of the brain and the skull. The transverse sinus is between, basically coming this way. Can you visualize it? It's between my cerebrum and cerebellum. That space in there. Right. Then we're going to name the white layers, the meninges, that are going around these things. So, if you look carefully, this, the, the white is meninges. The meninges follow the sinus. They go in, turn, and come back. Everyone see that? There's some drunk Roman that looked like a tent. It went in and tented. 
came back. So, huh, what word could you use to say makes a tent over my cerebellum? Pentorium cerebelli. So you got to be kind of clear on what you're saying. So the, the, the whole area is your transverse cerebral fissure where you cut the brain. The space where the fluid is, that's the transverse sinus. Where, they are, where the meninges are, that is the tentorium cerebelli. They're all the same place. You're just naming three different things. Does that Yay. mess you up yet? <laughs> so the whole end of town is a fissure. The tent is the meninges. The fluid stuff is the sinus. But they're all the same location. You're just naming the different parts. Make sense? So superior sagittal sinus, transverse sinus, tentorium, cerebelli is the white. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now I have to turn this off to show you the model that I, we don't have online. So hold on. I need the head. Can I have your head? <laughs> you don't have head. All right. So this one you have to basically take your phone and get in here. But let me walk you through it. So what I've been describing this way, you can see the... the can you see the purple and the blue in there, vaguely? All right. So I know it's hard. But if though that going this way, that represents if you went in and out of the screen of the transverse stuff. But you'll also notice there's blue that comes this way in the model. So if you take my hand and chop your head this way, you have some of the same stuff going sagittally. So there's a name for everything. There's going to be meninges that go from behind your brain all the way around and go into your forehead like this. They cut your cerebrum in half. So how would you say cerebrum cutting thing? Glad you asked. Find that F word, one of many you want to say. Falx cerebri. So the, yeah, so the, the, the dura matter that comes this way between the hemispheres is the falx cerebri. You can't see this picture because they cut it, right? But it goes down between the fishes, the falx cerebri. The space is the superior sagittal sinus. But the falx is the meninges in the groove. That vaguely makes sense. That's the blue in there. That's the bluish and the white in here. Then there's also meninges that cut your cerebellum in half. Falx cerebelli. So the, the, the sort of pervy analogy we biologists use is like a G-string or a thong. It follows the crack. So, the falx cerebelli goes on the vermis, the falx cerebri goes in the big butt crack of your brain, and those go vertically. This one goes horizontally transverse. They're different. Make sense? That's the purple. That's the purple. So what you want to do is stare inside this person's head and try to figure out if it goes horizontally, it's a tentorium. If it goes vertically, it's a falx. And then you have, there's three. You have the cerebrum, cerebellum, that kind of wording. So, this is the head model you want to pay attention to for the falxes and the tentoriums and the sinuses. Take a picture of that head before you walk out of here. All right? Let me do one more little picture. It's hard to describe a falx. Okay. Here we go. I'd like to point out, this is the Houston Community College, it's also on my page, but they have a really good one where they labeled it all for you. So, let's see if they follow along. Thalamus, third ventricle, aqueduct, fourth ventricle, arbor vita, right? So they have it pretty well labeled. I'm going to bring up the ventricles for you. Okay. So those are your ventricles again. That's Houston, actually. Now I'm going to show you this one. So if I were the falx cerebri, where would I be on this picture if I were a falx cerebri? Bong in the butt, right? Yeah. So you're going to go down the longitudinal fissure with dura matter and form underwear basically down the butt crack. Okay. But it's not the groove, that's the longitudinal fissure, but it follows the groove vertically in your head. And the, the superior sagittal sinus is the space between that and your skull. 
Make sense? So what's the difference between the boot and the One's deeper. Fissure's deeper. Yeah. So one's more superficial. And one's more deeper. Well, traditionally, fissures are bigger than sulcus, but okay. that's just the tradition. It's, that's it. Okay. You know, tomato, tomato. Kind of thing. So it goes down into your brain's butt crack. Yes. But it's it's every it's every. Yes. Okay. But it does it follows the brain and goes in with it, and they just okay. name that kind of mm -hmm. bead. Okay. Right. Let's do this one here then. Smarty. Let's do. Yes, a wedgie is a fox. Nice. <laughs> so, fox cerebri would follow that. Hey, look, a worm in your butt cheeks of a cerebellum. What is that? Vermis. That's the vermis. That's the butt cheeks of the cerebellum. But there would be dura matter following that, and that would be the fox cerebelli. So a wedgie in your cerebellum, a wedgie in your cerebrum, those are foxes. The tentorium would go this way into that transverse fissure cut in this way and form a tentorum. So, fox, fox, tent. Yeah. Do some kind of pseudo samurai thing, right? But remember, the sinus is the blue space, the tent and fox are the white meninges, and the fissures are just the big grooves. So, depending on what I ask on the quiz, you want to be careful between what thing. If I just point, don't say anything, you can give me a three. But if I say name the Space here, you'd say a sinus word. If I say name the meninges here, you'd give me a fox word. All right? If I say name the groove here, you'd give me a fissure word. So same place, different different word you need to get me there. Make sense? Okay, I'll shut up now. The rest of the time is yours. I want to show you those. Use the rest of your time as you see fit. All these you can link to my page, and there's more. Lab quiz next week. Lecture quiz next week. On the 232. Hmm? The is in the group. Now we remember it. Your email, you'll get it in your PCC email. I'm trying to get it. I already posted.